So in this video, I'm going to talk about the rates of reactions of different types of alkyl halides. And this is for E1 mechanisms. And so for most of the leaving groups, you're generally going to get an alkyl halide. So for example, it's going to either be a fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. That's generally what we see the most. And so let's start off with the alkyl the different types of alkyl halides and uh, like take a look at the reaction rates and so first let's look at the primary alkyl halide and so for a primary alkyl halide there's actually going to be no e1 elimination and this if you recall is due to the E1 mechanism where the bromine essentially is just going to leave. But then if the bromine leaves, what ends up what you end up with is a primary carbocation. And then as we've recalled, a primary carbocation is really bad and very unlikely to form. And so if you have a primary alkyl halide, for example, this molecule right here, it's not going to undergo E1 elimination. And so next, let's talk about a secondary alkyl halide. And so we'll just use this molecule, for example. And so when this molecule undergoes a reaction, it's going to form a secondary carbocation because the bromine is going to leave. So this would be the secondary uh, carbocation that would be formed from this secondary alkyl halide. And then after you finish with the E1 elimination, you're going to have this as your final product. And you could have the pi bond on either side. It's the exact same molecule. And so the secondary carbocation will undergo E1 elimination, but, I mean, sorry, the secondary alkyl halide will undergo E1 elimination, but due to the fact that the secondary carbocation is not the most stable carbocation, this secondary alkyl halide undergoes E1 elimination slower than tertiary halides, which we'll talk about on this next page. And so we'll just start off with that molecule. And so once again, to, for an E1 mechanism to begin, this bromine is going to leave, and then you get this tertiary carbocation. And then a pi bond will form to give you this as your final product after the E1 reaction is complete. So it's important to remember that going back to this secondary carbocation, it's important to remember that rearrangements can occur because it's a carbocation. So remember what we talked about, um, the hydride shifts and the methyl shifts can occur with secondary carbocations to make it more stable. And so if that occurs, you will get a different product. And so finally, let's talk about, let's rank the leaving groups. Because the leaving group is crucial in E1 reactions because the rate of the reaction depends on the leaving group. And so as you can see here, I've ranked the slowest on the left and the fastest on the right. And so pretty much as you go down the periodic table, the rate of the reaction will increase. And this is due to iodine being a bigger molecule, sorry, a bigger atom, and so that makes it a better leaving group, while fluorine is really small and makes it a rather poor leaving group. And so here we have the slowest, so it would react, the E1 mechanism would occur the slowest, if you use that molecule, this one right here, and this one would be the fastest. 
with the iodine on it. And so one thing to note is that E1 mechanisms are often accompanied by SN1 mechanisms. And so I hope this video helped you. If it did, please give it a like and share it with your friends.